On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we're gonna show you how to fix your sagging doors in pretty much all these old GM trucks. What is going on guys? I am Watch JR Go and today, like I said, we are here at O'Reilly's to pick up some parts to fix your saggy door and right. everything else on your GM truck. Let's get to it. This is everything you need to replace your door pins and your hinges on your truck. So we've got four, these are all the same, even though they look like they're different. Doorman 38419s and we have the door spring tool that these guys had in stock. So thanks Dylan. Shout out to O'Reilly's, everything in like stock, bag, ready to go. I don't need a bag. I'll just Put it all in my pocket or something. I heard what happened, dude. That's crazy. But the hundred dollar bill. Uh, I gotta get out of here. All right, man. You, <laughs> you too. So you've got yourself a saggy door, and nobody wants a saggy door. It creates all kinds of problems. First, they sound terrible. You open your door, you hear the creaking. Oh yeah, listen to that nice sound. Anyway, this one is absolutely crunchy, and then of course this door doesn't even like to shut. It did that time, but half the time we have to lift up on it and slam it shut to get it to actually latch. So I got lucky that time. And if you take a look inside here, you can see the old bushing. There is about half of the old bushing left and the hinge is way off center in uh, the actual body side of the hinge there. So the pin is all the way over on the edge. The pins don't really ever break in half. So you can kind of keep this up forever and just fight with your doors being terrible or you can replace the hinge pin. And today that's exactly what we're gonna do. There's another side effect of the doors being bad and it's a uh, terrible fender alignment and we need our fenders to fit a little bit better. So that's why we're actually doing this. It was so bad last night, we took the fender back off and decided to fix the door. We're talking like a, a quarter inch of movement in and out. There are upgrades for this too. I know there's a small company that makes uh, door pins out of tool steel and those, if you put them in, should never fail again. I assume they cost a lot. Uh, these ones cost something like $5 a pin. So it's no big deal to replace them with these. And I don't know if you want to do it again, maybe 100,000 miles later, they usually fail. Well, they start to get pretty bad around 100,000 miles. You can just decide what you want to do. You could spend a bunch of money and have perfect ones that never die or you could spend a little bit of money and do them every 100,000 miles. So today, we're going with that option. Also, time crunch here. There's also a door spring compressor that makes this job a lot easier. You can, of course, try to fight it with a uh, pry bar and possibly get hurt, or you can compress the spring in a vise and tie it together. We're talking about that spring right back in there. It's easy to see from the fender side. Uh, or you can use that little tool and it should make this much easier. Also, make sure you have two people for this job because you'll want to hold the door up for a lot of it and uh, doors are not light. Your doors can't look new without brand new door handles. So today we're replacing every door handle on this truck. They were all broken in one way or another. So I decided let's just buy them all. They're all actually pretty cheap. If you have a OBS or an S10, something like that with these old square door handles, very reasonably priced. So we bought them all. It was about 120 something dollars, $130 for all of it. And for 200 bucks, we're basically going through every single door on this to make it last another 100,000 miles. And even the third door, the extended cab door, it was broken, so I have a new handle for that. Here's part numbers for everything. There's the tailgate handle, tailgate handle trim, third door handle, uh, and then both sides of the exterior door handles. This one here is gonna be a little tricky because I don't have the screws for it. We're gonna have to hunt something down. To replace the latch on your extended cab door, you do need to pull the door panel off because there's no other way to get the latch bars out of the little uh, cantilever mechanism there. So you have to pull the seat belt, which you do need a Torx, let's see, T50 for that job. And just pop off the upper and lower seat belt bolts and then yank. Which means it should just pop off in here. There we go door panel off and now we can get to the latch. Should be pretty easy. You just open up these two uh, adjusters, pop them off the bars, put on the new handle, adjust it and go from there. All right, let's see if our extended cab door works now. Uh, we've been pulling on the rods to get this open every time we needed it. Now it's got a new handle. So there's the shut and let me get a, Ooh. apparently I didn't get the bottom one adjusted right. So you get to pull it apart and adjust it again. No big deal, it just takes a few minutes, but maybe test it before you put the door panel all back. 
And a few minutes later, we have contact. That is how that door should work. And I lube the hinges in the back with a bunch of white lithium grease. Hang on. They were making horrific noises. You can see all the white lithium in there now. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. So it'll probably need a few more treatments of that, but before you had to put all your weight in it to open this door. So that, fix that. White lithium grease is always the grease for your door hinges. And afterwards, you'll probably want to go back in and wipe it off because it makes a big mess. Over here, we're going to start with knocker loose because I have to pop all these collars off the pens and I want to make it easy. Whatever rust penetrant you like, for me, CRC knocker loose. I'll throw a squirt right there and everywhere these collars need to come out and that should get us home, I hope. So now I'm going to take a big pry bar, stick it right in here, pop that spring off. Then I'm going to take a screwdriver, pop that collar off. You can see it's already loose at the top, so a couple big uh, yanks on it should pop that right off the top. Same thing on the bottom. This pin goes up from the bottom. This pin goes down from the top. And then we'll support the door and we'll be ready to pull the door off. We'll knock out the pins, slide this door back, and then the bushings are right there, right there. We'll put in the new bushings and we're ready to drive in the new pins. So technically, this job is easy. The reality of it is it can become a absolute nightmare. So make sure you have help, somebody to lift the door and make sure you've got some time. It could take way longer than you expect. You never know what you're getting into with these chops. Doesn't want to fit. Oh, there we go, we got it under. So now I'm just gonna go around and pry this off till the collar comes off. That's the only thing holding the pin in. Look at that. So I went ahead and tapped it down just a little bit. Obviously the retainer's off, I gave it a couple of hits. Jordan's picking up on the door there and he is moving. Move that thing over there. <laughs> little play, not much. <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty normal on most cars, you know, no big deal. All right, we're gonna finish tapping out these pins, tapping out the bushings, and then a little tip, tip, tippy, and we'll have the other ones back in. Can you just screw the knocker loose? Yeah, you have to hit them with knocker loose. Right, there's one. Okay, the whole door is gonna come free after this one. Why don't you replace one? Because uh, the bushings slide in. Uh, you gotta beat him in first. That's the problem. Yeah. There goes part of it. Uh, give me a wiggle. Okay, door's free. Uh, now it needs to come out just a pair. Come on out, a little bit more. Let me give this a hit. Do you want to go eat at Taco or KFC? KFC. <laughs> Renaissance man, the Australian edition. Demolition man. Demolition man. It's Taco Bell's the only restaurant that made it through the food wars. But if you watch the Australian version, it's European one. Or yeah, whatever. It goes. It dubs over Taco Bell. It goes KFC. No, it's a uh, no, Pizza it's, Hut. Is it Pizza Hut? Pizza Hut. Ah, because oh, that Taco Bell and Taco Bell wins, and then Taco Bell's not in Europe, so they had to use Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. But they dubbed it like they didn't even try. Double check. We've got our new bushings in. We're ready to bring our door back and set it back onto the hinges. So we're going to go out and then back in. You guys ready? And down. Okay, I think we're good. Now come in. I'm like a toilet paper salesman. Swing the door in. Oh, right there it is. There it is. There it is. There we go. Okay. Your top's lined up. It's ready. Okay, uh, wiggle air. There it is. Tap, 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 tap. What you need me to do? Lift up. And it's in. Okay, open the dough. That was all it took to get us most of the way there. Now we just need to put the clips on. Today on Watch JR Go, we take the truck to the crusher. <laughs> <laughs> Door pins defeated me. I give up. So now we're going to take a socket, push our clips down on there, and we should be all done changing out these pins. So we went ahead and compressed the door spring and now I've started backing it off. We should be ready to pull our spring compressor out of here now. I think the spring is all the way in place. There we go. Okay, don't move it yet. Let me check the spring again. Try her out. Does it shut properly now? No, it's too high. No? Oh, shut it first. Oh, perfect. It's never done that since we've had it. It shuts perfectly. Door handle needs replaced, but we know. We got a door handle. It's right there. It cool. would go, it would go bang. <laughs> you have to pick it up and close it. All right, that is replacing your door pins. Also, uh, good luck. It's not a fun job in any way. 
even when we put that in exactly the way they say, it still split the bushing there on top. So it's still, it's fine. It's riding in the bushing and it's totally installed. The bottom ones look wonderful, but the top one is pretty mediocre, I gotta say. So I guess the tool steel ones might be a good choice, but if you're in a pinch, run the doorman ones, you should be just fine. And now it's time for us to change all these door handles out and we should have perfect doors again. So that's gonna be nice. I mean, it's gonna fix this problem, which I think was just the screw falling out. So we've got our brand new door handle here. You can see this is 77244, exterior door handle front right. And first off, before we get too busy here, we have to pop off the existing lock. So you can depress this, it looks like. Yep, and push the lock cylinder out. Or uh, the lock cylinder goes that way. Oh wait, maybe you don't have to do any of this. Or you could just do that. That, that works pretty well too. It looked like it was way more complicated. All right, here's our new one. Slide our lock in. Should get a nice little pop. Boom, lock installed. And here are the two uh, tens, I think, maybe eights. It's been a second and brand new seals on the door handle. These door handles were just absolutely ruined. Everything was trashed. So this is gonna be super nice on that brand new wrap. Well, on this truck that has about a million stories, I'm sure over its lifetime, um, the handle wouldn't fit correctly. And I was like, what is going on? Why can we see light underneath the handle? Well, somebody had tried to break in here with a crowbar before, and I'm sure they probably succeeded. Screwdriver, crowbar, and that, go for it. A little more. That's good. Hit the other one. We hadn't tightened any of the tens up that hold the handle on in the back. And I ended up actually putting the handle on with nothing attached and then attaching it all inside, which takes a long time, but it definitely worked out. Now, it's much better. Anyway, we did a little body work uh, underneath the handle there to fix where they tried to break in. You guys can see how wrecked that actually was. Um, we took the pry bar, put it underneath, and used it to roll the metal back up into place, and then everything ended up being high. So we made ourselves a fancy little EDR tool. It's a two by four wrapped in a microfiber cloth. Hit it with a sledgehammer and made it low again. So, I mean, these every panel on this truck's a bit wavy, which is why I love it for its stories. I mean, it's done, done everything and been everywhere, but now this handle's completely back in and ready to go. Is the rod still connected? Something happened. After, I'd say it took uh, one hour since the last time we stopped recording, we have finally gotten this thing back together because one of the clips, the clip for the rod that actually uh, runs the latch, it had fallen off and then it fell into the door and then we sat in there with air and a mirror and eventually the inspection camera and we got it out. So now, door handles that work. <laughs> Why does that take a day? It just takes a day. I'm just, I told you guys going into this, be prepared if you're gonna do door pins and the door handles shouldn't take that long if you're really careful. Mine had to be bent into shape because the aftermarket design's a little bit different than the OEM one. So that it kept falling out. So we had to get in there and bend the rod, uh, put a little, I don't know, three degree, five degree angle on it so that it would sit flush and it stopped falling out after that. So that's how long it takes you to change door handles on an S10. New cars are so much better to have cable drive everything. I'm telling you guys, if you can work on a new car, it'll save your life. So there you have it, extended cab door handle, the door door handles, um, door pins, and we are going to do the tailgate handle, although that one's very easy. You th pull out three bolts, replace the trim ring, put the new handle in and replace three bolts. Much better than this. Uh, unfortunately, the tailgate's not on the truck right now, so it'd be a pain to do it on the floor since I have to like hold it up while we work on it. And, the wrap will be, uh, we'll be back on the wrap tomorrow. So we're gonna get a ton done there. But now you guys know how to fix your saggy doors, fix your door handles. I mean, basically everything you could wanna do on a door, except for pulling the door panel since we're gonna run this truck without them. But you know, door handles, it's easy to find how to's on how to pull them. Usually two to three bolts and then pop all the clips. These ones, we toss the door panels in the trash. If you remember, they had so many rats and families of animals in them. They went straight in the dumpster. I mean, they stunk. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop. Watch Jericho.com for cool shirts. Not like this. And please like, share, subscribe. Do whatever you want to do. And I'll talk to you next time. Ah, oh, tomorrow. This whole side will be wrapped. And now that we got door pins, we can put our fender back. And I can wire this thing. 
we got a lot done. This stuff, it all looks beautiful. We had to build a custom riser for uh, the fuse box because the ABS is gone. So it looks a lot better, but definitely had to modify some things. And we just got power back to the body. The fuse box is uh, pretty much hooked up here. We've got to hook up a couple more connectors. Obviously this is the rear of the truck connector. White one is main body. And that's pretty much gonna get us there. Uh, we've got the passenger window down now because Zach needs that to wrap. And he will be here in the morning to start kicking this off with us again. So we're gonna roll down that window tomorrow. I'll probably use a power probe. And uh, while he's doing that, I'll try to finish wiring the truck. But we are close. We are close. Having power back into this truck that was taken all the way down to the frame is a big accomplishment. And we gotta clean all this up. I'm gonna have to put some tape on there to make it pretty. I don't want the battery to go dead. The battery is 1000% not hooked up again. I, I took it all the way off.